This video is supported by Rocket Railways for all your model railway needs. Please check the link in the description below. Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall. You will see over my right hand shoulder here that I've been getting quite busy with some plaster cloth. This video is going to show you how I've gone from a bare baseboard at the far end of this side of the layout to where we're at now. So come and join me now as I show you the processes that I've gone through. With all the bridges built and set in place now down at this end of the layout, this whole area is now ready for development and what I would like to do and one of the big goals for this year is to get this length of the layout all scenic up. So hopefully in this video here I will show you some of that process going on. So let's get down to trackside. Okay, so what do I actually need to do? Well, I have made a start on it, but this is from some time ago, and you'll see some card formers are in place there, ready to take the plaster bandage to create the hills. The rest of that beyond the main lines have to be done. The tunnel portals have to be done. The blending in of the road and working it away off the layout has to be done. But before we can do all that, we need to paint the track. job is now done. It took what an hour or so a night over seven nights just to paint that with a paintbrush. Awful. There's about 30 feet of track had to be done but we're there now and we can move on to more interesting things. Now the next stage I need to do is to sort out these tunnel portals and you can see over in the far edge there that uh, I have little wooden strips set in behind that portal and if I take you over to the workbench now I can show you why I'm doing that. Okay so these tunnel portals are the old I think is it Merit produced these and they're quite a sort of cheap plastic but they don't come up too bad whenever you get a lick of paint onto them but what they have on the rear is a little groove going right round it which will allow me to add in a brick plastic card strip uh, in order that we can extend out the back of the, the, um, the, the portal. So what I've done is I have cut a sheet of plastic card to length and I have painted and weathered it up just roughly. It's not 100% um, perfect but at the end of the day at the end of the day it is purely there as an additional decorative feature as you go in. So with a drop of super glue running around the edge of this, I can pop that into that groove. Now, whenever it's in that groove, you can see there that the plastic card splays out at either end. So those little wooden strips that have glued down to the baseboard, which I showed you previously, will help push that in so that it sits an awful lot better. Um, you could probably get away without doing it, but I thought just for neatness and tidiness, it would help just to do that. Now, if you find that, you, oh, if you find that the portal isn't long enough whenever you get it into position, what you can then also do, well, I suppose you could extend out the plastic card, but I didn't want to waste the good plastic card on something that is going to be more or less invisible. So I have the other one done and I'll take you over to that now and just show you what I've actually done there. So this portal has already been fitted into place and as you can see we have the plastic card just here but extending beyond that is just a strip of basic card um, and on the inside of that I've given it a coat of black acrylic paint. I've also painted 
much of the uh, the baseboard as well in there and already we've got a real dark tunnel entrance which is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'll repeat that process with the other portal and then we can move on to actually maybe starting to build up some of the hill scenery. Okay so things have moved on a little bit further since I last saw you. The two tunnel mouths are now into position and glued and ready to go. This one here and the one just tucked in around the corner. But what's this big structure here? Well, I'm trying to work this through in a methodical fashion. And what I want to do is get in my main structures first, whether it be the tunnel mouse or in this case the road, before I actually start developing the terrain around it. If I have these into place, then it's easier for me to visualise what what way the terrain would actually run down towards the track rather than just having this big lump of a hill that doesn't look natural in, in, uh, in, how, it, in how it's finished if you understand. So this structure here has been uh, built and I'll bring, bring the camera in a little bit closer to just to show you how I've gone about doing that and I'll finish off with a little bit on camera showing how I create using the card to to create that terrain aspect. As you can see, no expense has been spared in terms of the materials used to build up this road system. Look, at the end of the day, it works and it works very well. If I take off the top of the road surface, which hasn't yet to be glued down yet, you can see basically I have built it in sort of like a what would you describe like a, a cellular format what I first of all did was took one of the outside edges and that's just a large piece of card and bent round and glued into place just with standard PVA and then from that the width of this road is about 95 millimeters so I've cut strips crossways the same length 95 millimeters and as the road turns those card sections turn as well to allow me to keep a similar sort of dimension the whole way up the road once that's in you can then put in your cross braces as such and it becomes a very solid structure if i place this card down onto it I, mean, I can put a fair piece of weight down on that. I wouldn't want to stand on it, but I would imagine if it was made well enough, you probably could stand on it with a piece of card. It's that solid. And it's all just done, as you can see there, with a cardboard box and some PVA glue. So then the next stage is to take your uh, two mil mount board and or grey board and we put that on the top for that there have a larger sheet it's been placed onto the top and then a line drawn in beneath on both sides and then you can take that away and cut it and put it into place now i didn't have a piece long enough and particularly with it going on the bend there um, to to fit so it's just been done in two sections but that's it now you'll see also uh, that there is a tunnel mouth of some description and obviously that's just so it can bridge the branch line as the road goes up and allows the, the, the coaches to run through. If you had something similar yourself, just make sure that your clearances are all very good before you start finally gluing because you wouldn't want to have to rip this up at a later date. Anyway, it's in. I'm going to glue the, um, the road surface down now doesn't matter about the joins at this point in time uh, as once everything is finished I will be putting a skim of tile grout onto it just to give that final um, road surface uh, finish to it so all those joins will disappear.
that's the last piece in this whole area has taken an absolute age to complete but it's done so let's take a closer look at what I've been doing there are additional complications with this section of the layout namely the fact that the branch line runs underneath uh, the, t the, the hillside so I have had to make up a sort of lattice work of um, card in underneath then lay it over with another sheet of card flat and then build this cellular structure up on top in the far corner there is an access hole should a derailment happen in underneath I can get my arm in there if that isn't enough it may well be necessary to make another opening in around here but because this is all being made out of card it'll be layered over plaster bandage that should be easy enough to cut and open up once the plaster bandage goes on and the fact that the bandage will be hardened by that stage means that then I can still place that back in and it creates another little hatch there. You will also see in the top hand corner there are there's an additional road has gone in I thought it would just make it a little bit more visually interesting to have a little bit of a, a junction and the white card sections are essentially they're set in at the minute with the view that this is probably the start of some wee village uh, with probably a house to the left hand side of the junction another one to the right and then the little row of cottages or something like that on the near side here because the hill is on a slope or sorry the road is on a slope I need to ensure that I have a flat base for the buildings to go on whenever I get around to building them so that is the purpose of that card there so there we go the next stage is to get this all filled with paper newspaper scrunched up and then we'll get the plaster bandage on there is one little other thing that I want to look at first before we do that you will see there in the, the left hand corner that there are two rock molds sitting now they're just roughly in place as to where I think I might like to put them essentially this deep cutting needs I think some form of rock included in it just to give the impression that this was a really tough area to dig through the moles are from Woodland Scenics and it's actually their starter kit it's quite a good little kit too you get one mold and you get enough plaster bandage to make up five or six of these rock moles now the only downside of that is that they all look exactly the same but I think with an element of breaking them up rotating them in a different position I should be able to create enough of a variance in them that they don't look exactly the same so I'm going to go and have a wee look and think how I can put these into position and where I want to do them and then it's on to the messy job of plaster bandage. The newspaper's in and I'm more or less ready to do the plaster bandage now. A couple of things just to point out if you wanted to follow this method. The newspaper is there basically as a support for the plaster bandage whenever it goes on top hopefully you may not be able to tell on the video there but there is a sort of a wavy thing to the the the, the way the paper's been stuffed in there and um, it sort of dips down in the center but what will happen whenever the plaster uh, cloth goes on to the top of that is that it will press down on it it will wet the paper below and it will soften and then you can sort of manipulate it a little bit more and again as the plaster bandage goes off and hardens you can actually start forming those sort of shapes in that that you want in your plaster bandage too and it will stay in that position the second thing to do is particularly with regards to that cutting i have been using john hill uh, from dipper town junctions 158 to check the clearances very very important to do that at this point here we don't want to be sort of later on down the road the plaster's down it's hardened and all of a sudden a coach or a uh, a locomotive can't get past so it's well worth considering doing those checks beforehand right it's time to cover up the track get things ready and then we'll get laying some plaster bandage <laughs> Thank you. 
Adding that plaster cloth really does transform this entire area. You should now be able to get a good idea of the contours of the, the land that I'm trying to create here. We've got that deep cutting for the branch going into the tunnel mouth. We've got a cutting of sorts up towards the road bridge for the main line and hopefully it just blends and flows quite well. This plaster cloth has now dried completely. It's really warm here at the minute in Northern Ireland and it's, you know, it's drying in within a couple of days. You may not have been able to tell with the time-lapse video that I did, but essentially the plaster cloth has had two to three layers of cloth applied to each section. And then as it goes off, I'm trying to smooth it off. I'm trying to blend in the, the plaster into those porous holes of the cloth just to try and fill as many gaps as possible so whenever it comes to painting it we're not left with a whole lot of little white dots all over the place but like I say as the cloth goes off you smooth it out and that helps to create the contours and it softens that bumpy look that you have with whenever the paper is all just scrunched up into those little cells. Now invariably you will get the odd little bit of plaster spilling off no matter how well you're trying to protect an area. Just take a wet wipe or even some water and a, a bit of kitchen roll and just give it a good rub down. Now in those more uh, hard hardened end areas where maybe there's a little bit more plaster has gone where you, where you didn't expect. Uh, you may need to do, do that two to three times just to get it cleaned off but it will come good again. So this is where we're going to pause this particular video. We will revisit this area throughout the rest of this year with other jobs that need to be doing such as painting the rocks uh, to bring them out and I'm looking to put in an awful lot of trees into this area too and it was one of my main ambitions this year was to get this stretch of the layout more or less complete on it from a scenic point of view and I've made huge steps just with this process. Look thank you very much for watching really appreciate it if you've liked the video please click that like button below please comment as well I always enjoy seeing them and if you're not a subscriber to the channel please consider doing so and I look forward to chatting to you in the next video